Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, so where I left off last video, I had just uh, got that front floor pan installed. Um, and I think now I'm going to tackle this section here. Um, that way once I get my floor pan in, I can get that uh, seat pan in. Uh, it goes across here, it actually provides quite a bit of structure. Um, yeah, but first, I think what I'm going to do is something I've been avoiding doing for the last little while and is getting rid of the rear end. It's still hanging here. It's just going to get nothing but in the way for the next few things that i got to do. So I might as well get that all taken out and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm assuming all these bolts are right. This side might be easy because it's got new bolts um, in there. I don't know. How these are going to be. I assume, I assume that they're seized. Um, well, you know, we'll give them a shot. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I think I'm going to have to move one of my jacks out of the way. I don't know if both sides or not, but we'll take a look at that and uh, get started on taking this out. I don't know what the best way is. Do Just do the rear end or all the springs all at once. Um, I'll figure it out. I don't know. I gotta get those shocks off first thing. But. All right, let's get at it. Okay. Well, here we are again. So, I got the shocks out. That was pretty uneventful. Um, there's an old set of air shocks in here. You can see them right there. There, there, there. So, we just had to... The nuts came off easy. That was real easy. It just snapped off, so that's ideal. And then, uh, yeah, had to pull the uh, two holes, as you can see up there. I don't know if you can see the holes. They're there, trust me. Um, where, the, uh, where the air and the Schrader valve went. Um, yeah. So now the other side came off pretty easy, but it, it looks like it had been off once already. Because um, they have different nuts on that side. So, we're going to try this one. Um, it's pretty rusted. I don't know if you can see up that close, but that's what I'm working with. Um, so I'm going to give this a go. Let's see if this works. I don't know. Give me a good view. Let's see what happens. It's not liking it. And that's stuck now, so that's great. <laughs> All right, she's pretty seized. I may have to get the big guns on this one. Hold on. Okay, round two. Let's try this out. Um, next step, if these don't come off, I'm just gonna put some heat on them. Or, well actually I just cut the bolts, probably be a lot easier, but we'll see if this works. One. It's just that easy. Now how the hell am I get that nut off? Alright, let's go back. Try that. Oh, perfect. You can see it's getting a little warm. The threads are pretty well toast on these. So. Come on, get off of there. One more. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> oh, I 
got dust in my mouth. Oh, jeez. All right. Well, that was easy. How hot are these? Ow. No. That one's okay. Well, that worked all right. Well, that one's gone. Oh, that one's that one's a bit warm. It's still kind of smoking. This one's gonna be. I might just you know what? I got this thing here. I use it. There we go. Didn't burn my fingers. Perfect. So that worked all right. So that those are off. So I should be able to just slide this out. You know, just you know, just slide her on out. So we'll see. I don't have it supported. So I think what I'll do, I'll lift one side out and drop it on the ground. I got my dollies here. I'm gonna rest it on the dollies. That way I can just move it around nice and easy and whether I need them or not. I don't know how heavy this thing is. I remember reading somewhere it weighed 160 pounds or something like that. So I'm gonna put it on the end of the rope. Uh, let's see what we got. Pull these off. Scooch. Go. So I have cut the parking brake off. The brake lines are disconnected from the front. So we'll see how this goes here. I don't know if you can see anything. It's really dark. We'll do this. All right. some stuff out of the way. Something that moves isn't great. Ugh. Here we go. Let's slide it off a bit more. Just that easy. Now we'll slide it this way. If I get on the other side, it'll work better. Come out a bit. Break my sweat. This isn't good. Cable. Oh, found something sharp. Ow. Oh. All right. Well, that's that. I'll get this uh, 
cut off and get the rear end moving out of the way and get these springs off. Okay, so rear end is out. Got all my dollies so I can scooch it along. Um, one thing, well, I was not sure what type of rear end was in here. Um, I'm assuming it's a Ford 8 inch. Um, but all your specs can be found on that poorly lit um, tag right there. There we go. Now, lucky for me, whoever put it on, put it on backwards. So everything's backwards. So I might pop that off, clean it up just so I can see what we're working with here. Um, the VIN number shows, I, I can't remember. I want to say it was an 8 inch with a 279 rear end, or 280, um, but who knows. Um, I'm going to pop that tag off and get a better look at it and maybe use the old uh, Google to figure out what is going on there. Okay, so I got the tag off and looked it up real quick. There's a billion videos on how to, how to decode these. Um, this isn't one of those. So I got the basics off it. I don't know what that number is. I don't know. There's an L in there. It's locking. This is an open diff. I knew that. Could be the plant. I just looked it up real quick. I want the basics. 67 to 70 Mustang is what this model is. It's an 8 inch and it's got a 279. So it's the same um, rear end that came with it. It's original. Um, and I'm going to stick with it. Let's see how it goes. Now there will be some that say, oh, 279, that's too tall. And I don't care. All right. So I don't want to see the comments. <laughs> I'm going to rebuild this one. Well, I'll reseal it. I'll take it apart. That It's got the third member, so that'll come out be nice and easy. As you can see, nothing's seized on here because it's covered in oil and grease. Um, so it's probably got a leaky pinion seal. Probably every seal in here is shot. So, um, yeah, I'm going to take it out, reseal it, check the bearings, um, see what it needs. I'm going to put it back in. Um, I'm not changing the tire size on this, so I'm running 14 inch rims, so it's a 26 inch tire. Not a real big tire, so we'll see how it does. If I find it's a dog, then I'll put, uh, I don't know, I'll change the gear ratio. Until that point though, it's going to stay at 279. Um, it's not a big deal to change out. Um, when the time comes, if I want to, maybe be perfect. Who knows? I've never driven this car. So I want to see how it acts, kind of, you know, how it sits-ish. Um, yeah, it may be perfect. But we're going to leave it like that. I'll put this tag back on there so I don't lose it. Um, and yeah, we'll get back to taking these springs out. Because, uh, yeah, this can be a real pain. So we'll see. Maybe the bolt, hopefully just the bolt will just snap right off. And it'll be nice and easy. So, all right, let's get back at it. Okay, well, here I am, underneath the car, and so that bolt should be okay, it's new. I'm assuming this side will pop right off. This side, another story, it's got the original bolt still in. This side I haven't popped that cover off yet, so, but it's got, it's original. As you can see, the, uh, this whole frame rail is gone. It's pretty well toast. Um, this side is non-existent up to here. And then get back in here and it's... we're back. But I have all new ones ready to go. One unfortunate thing I just found is this here. I was hoping to reuse this piece. I really hadn't looked at it yet. I'm like, ah, it should be fine. It's not fine. I don't know why I'm shocked by that. I was hoping not to have to buy this piece. I looked it up the other day and it was really expensive. I'm talking about this piece right here. It was very pricey. Same as this whole pan. It was like, it was a lot. So I'm hoping it's okay. Or at least if I have to do a couple patches on it, but I'm hoping the majority of it is all right. Uh, but yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, I don't know if you can see. Oh, what do I do here? Oh, there we go. 
um, right here. I put my finger right there. It goes. Oops. Want something? It just. I'm put my thumb right through it. Same as there. Oh, that was with the finger poke. Perfect. That's how strong it is. Just in there. Finger. Um. So yeah, imagine if I hit that with a hammer. That was just a, that was just a gentle finger poke in. So this side's the same. Like there's no fixing that. That's all. I guess I could, but what's the rest of it like? Ugh. Anywho's, that's got to come out. Um, I've had to patch small stuff like on that corner. Like most of this, it's thin to begin with, so it's not a big deal. Um, it's just providing a cover to keep dirt and stuff um, from rolling up into there. Um, but yeah, that's a fairly structural component. That's where your shock towers bolt into those holes there. You're not shock towers, just your shocks. Go into those holes and then go down to the spring. And Well, the springs are gone. Uh, the spring holder. But you get it. There's holes. So I'm going to have to take that right out. Which I'm not happy about, but, you know, I'm here. I might as well do it. That's, yeah, if I replace both that and that cross member, that's an extra thousand bucks, I think, from what I saw. Unless that was just a, I don't know, maybe I can find it cheaper somewhere else, but who knows? Either way, I gotta get these springs down and uh, keep on trucking, so hold tight. So, after sitting under the car and contemplating life for a bit, I don't know if anybody else does that. I just had a moment of clarity. Like, why don't I just take a grinder and cut the stupid things off? Uh, it's not like I'm saving these springs. I just cut the ends off. I have, you can get new shackles. I have some already. Um, the springs are flat. Um, so I'm getting new ones of those as well. So. I'm literally saving nothing here. Same as the torque box and these arms, they're coming off too. So guess who's getting the grinder treatment? So I need to stop uh, screwing around with trying to take bolts out. I'm discovering. And it's not like I'm keeping any of these things. So just going in the trash. So next up, I'm gonna cut. That's done. I'm gonna see about cutting that out and uh, getting that floor pan replaced. Oh, well, that's done. Okay. Okay. Well, it's been uh, it's been a couple hours, more than a couple, um, and I think I have everything in place to start welding. Um, yeah, I got all my holes drilled for my spot welds. They're all lined up nicely. I have some screws I want to put in just to suck it down um, into place. I got my spot welds all the way along here. Um, everything looks good. Um, yeah, I think I'm just about ready. This is exciting. Um, yeah, I'll get you set up and you can watch that and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, well, um, I think I'm gonna start off with my plug welds. So across the front and along the side here, and along this uh, French port, and we'll see how that goes. That way it's, it's in place, it's not going to move. I got it screwed down in five, six, seven spots, I think. Um, so wherever it is now is where it's going to stay. So let's get welding.
Okay, let's take a look. That went much better. I'm very happy with how this looks. So, I just got it stitched into place all the way along. Um, spot welds look good. That worked really well. Um, you know, I burned through, I think one, on the very last weld I blew through. Um, actually, there's two, two spots I blew through. That was a tough little spot there to get around. I wish I had, a, I had put a smaller uh, cutoff blade that but to get around that corner but other than that it looks pretty good it's nice that uh, timed weld function on that welder it works really well you see all my welds are almost identical and they're all the same size just one little tack 0.6 seconds each one um, yeah worked really well so now I'm going to finish welding this, I think. Yeah, yeah, might as well. Um, as I'll finish that tonight, that should take me a little while, so that'll probably be it. And, uh, today, yeah, I'll have to figure out a better way to stand. My back was killing me while I was doing this. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not. A lot of stretching happening. Took a few breaks. But I could probably lay on my side in here now. If I want to weld it, it's not going anywhere now. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, I'll uh, show you the finished product. Okay. Well, it's all welded in. It looks like it should. Yeah, it went pretty well. Um, no complaints. Uh, I got my settings dialed in now, so I know I'm not blowing through. Everything looks good. Everything stayed straight, doesn't look warped at all. I gotta clean it up yet. Um, I pulled the piece off the back, as you can see here. That's what was along the back section that I cut off. It came right off, so that's good. Um, yeah, but I think it's that's it for uh, this video. And yeah. Next time, I think, I don't think I can do much with the back. Um, yeah, I'll start on the other side torque box and we'll get a floor in this thing. All right, we'll see you next video.